Yeah. Well, thank y'all for letting me <clears throat> try to bore you tonight. <laughs> Hopefully not. Um, my name's Sean Frederick. Uh, I, I grew up not far north of here. In fact, I grew up with this guy right here, right down the road from me in the big town of Perkins. Uh, I uh, grew up watching trains from the time I was little and got to really be fascinated with them. And, uh, my grandfather was actually, he was uh, a fireman on the Cotton Belt years ago, which actually sparked the interest even more, and uh, just got kind of fascinated by the machines, you know, these large machines moving all these cars, going all different directions, north and south, and uh, started taking a lot of pictures, and that's where his dad, he actually worked on the cotton belt also in, in the track maintenance, so a lot of things that I didn't know he taught me and uh, didn't stop there. Uh, I actually was a volunteer at the St. Louis Iron Mountain up in Jackson for two years. Uh, I did everything from uh, track maintenance to uh, maintaining the train and the last year I was there I was actually a conductor where there's my hat there and uh, took a lot of pictures, uh, but still still very interesting and uh, started doing a little bit more research into uh, the area a couple of years ago and found it was really fascinating and discovered that uh, a lot of the towns in southeast Missouri either have or did have uh, railroads through and, and a lot of towns didn't exist until they were built. Um, and uh, let some more people come in here before I get too far here. <clears throat> yeah. I know every day, you know, we uh, we have to deal with trains, and sometimes think they're new since they're loud. I always get stopped at crossings, you know. It's like, man, but we don't realize how big of a part they've had in uh, growing Missouri in general and this area. Uh, they've very been a very important part of our history and the economy, and. Uh, Today, Missouri is home for uh, extensive rail system. Uh, Missouri is the tenth largest, has the tenth largest number of railroad miles in the United States, with approximately 4,800 miles of track and about 7,300 public and private highway rail crossings. Uh, 19 freight railroads operate in the state, uh, and carries the fourth largest amount of freight tonnage in the nation, so it's still vital for Missouri. Uh, over 7.2 billion in Missouri commodities are shipped by rail, and that's today. Uh, Kansas City and St. Louis are ranked in the second, as second and third largest rail transportation centers in the nation, respectively. Uh, overall, the state's rail system moves uh, the equivalent of more than 20 million truckloads per year today. Uh, even in the 1850s, Missourians realized how important railroads could be. It was a revolutionary machine. It could transport passengers and goods many miles at a time, pulling tons of weight without much effort. It was a way to be connected to other cities and the outside world, and a lot of people in this area realized that. Uh, it was a way also for them to get goods out of this area and bring more in. This area was, uh, before it was vast farmland, it was known for its timber industry. That was the biggest, biggest thing here. Now our northern counties, they were timber, but they also had some mining operations up in Madison and St. Francis counties that way. Uh, but that was a way they could ship their product out. Um, and the railroads were a way they could do that. 
in, in an easy way. Uh, well, like I said before, before all of this was uh, drained, you know, we see farmland for miles. Well, that wasn't the case, you know, 150 years ago. Uh, the name Swamp East Missouri, it, it got its name very rightly because most of the area from Scott Stoddard, the southern part of Cape County, all the way into the Boot Hill uh, was all swamp. Uh, most of it was uninhabitable. Uh, it would take, I, I talked to somebody at Real, Little River Drainage District today, and he said it would take somebody a day to go from Haytai to Kennett, and only 30 minute drive today. <clears throat> but uh, the railroads were a way that they could get to point to point, and most people didn't have, they didn't have cars obviously back then, but the, the railroads had the mon they had the funding and the manpower to, to do this project. Now I'm going to get into some brief details about some of the first uh, railroads that uh, actually came to be here. Uh, the first railroad that was built in southeast Missouri was the Carrow and Fulton. Uh, it was uh, commissioned in 1853. Uh, it was chartered to build a railroad from Carroll, Illinois uh, by a steamboat ferry to the Texas border near Fulton, Arkansas. Uh, construction started uh, between Birds Point and Charleston in 1859. Uh, due to financial problems in the Civil War, there were setbacks and the railroad wasn't completed to Texas until the 1870s. But, in fact, during the Civil War, the uh, Confederate and Union soldiers, uh, since they would, uh, battle lines would change and, and uh, land would be changed, uh, <laughs> when, when one would retreat, they would destroy the track so the other couldn't use it. But the Carroll and Fulton was the only one that had any construction during the Civil War. Most all of them, all the other railroads, the, the government, everything was shut down. And it took a long time for them to recover. Most uh, most railroads were uh, financially set back or had damage due to the Civil War. Uh, and in 1873, the Carroll and Fulton was reorganized as the Carroll, Arkansas, and Texas Railroad. Uh, the second one that uh, that was built after that one, actually built kind of at the same time, was the St. Louis Iron Mountain. Uh, that was built kind of in partnership with the Carroll and Fulton. Um, the St. Louis Iron Mountain had already reached Ironton by 1858 from St. Louis. Uh, then uh, on August 14th of 1869, the Belmont branch of the railroad connecting from Bismarck, Missouri to Belmont was completed by uh, the final piece of rail laid inside of a tunnel in Bullinger County near Glen Allen uh, in the middle of the night from what I understand. <laughs> and uh, that line, that was about 120 miles from Bismarck to Belmont. Um, and at Belmont they were ferried across by steamboat over to Columbus, Kentucky which was connected to the Mobile and Ohio uh, Railroad. Um, now the uh, St. Louis Iron Mountain also split from Bismarck and uh, they had continued the line to Popper Bluff uh, which it connected with the Carroll, Arkansas and Texas Railroad. Uh, but until uh, in 1874 that became part of the St. Louis Iron Mountain. Uh, now in, uh, on January 31st, a little, little bit of tidbit of information here talking about the St. Louis Iron Mountain. On January 31st of 1874, uh, the Jesse James gang actually robbed, that was the first Missouri train robbery in Iron County. Uh, they never really knew exactly the amount stolen, but it was estimated between $2,000 and $22,000. That's still high dollar money today. Uh, then in uh, 1917, the St. Louis Iron Mountain was merged with the Missouri Pacific Railroad, which some people probably, that was up until 
1986, I believe. <clears throat> the, uh, the next railroad I was going to talk about was the uh, Cotton Belt Railroad, which that's the, the one my grandfather worked for. Uh, that was uh, built into southeast Missouri into the 1880s. It was uh, completed from Tyler, Texas to Malden in 1882. Uh, it was first known as the Texas and St. Louis Railroad. Uh, then in 1889, the railroad was completed to Delta, Missouri, and then changed its name again to the St. Louis, Arkansas, and Texas Railway. Uh, then in 1898, uh, they built it on from Delta to Elmo, which I believe then was probably Foreign Belt. Um, then, uh, I lost my place here. That in 1898, it also was changed to the St. Louis Southwestern Railroad. Um, then in 1905, the Thebes uh, River Bridge, that is still in existence today, was built over the Mississippi River, uh, which is still used today, uh, linking to St. Louis and uh, drastically changing a lot of railroad traffic in the area. Uh, and it's still the only uh, railroad river bridge between St. Louis and Memphis. Uh, that is used by the Union Pacific Railroad today. Uh, and then the, the, net, the last, least, last but not least to mention was the Lewis Howe Railroads. He's probably the most famous Missourian for uh, all of the railroads that he built and eventually sold to different various modern railroads today. Uh, also commonly known, he's been called the father of Southeast Missouri, and rightly so. Uh, a lot of people didn't know that before he had even started his first railroad that was built between Delta and Cape, uh, there had been a railroad that was started earlier in the 1870s, but they just ran out of money. So he decided he would give it a try. He, was, uh, <coughs> he wasn't a lifetime railroader, he was actually an attorney and decided one day, you know, I think I'm just going to build a railroad. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the story is, is he, actually read, he actually read about four books and uh, he just told his wife, said that, I think I want to do this. <laughs> so she said, okay, let's do it. So. Uh, Again here, uh, so he had uh, he started uh, building the railroad actually from Delta to Cape instead of the other way around. Uh, he start actually finished with the construction on January first of eighteen eighty one. Uh, the stories that I had read also was that uh, obviously January it was cold. Uh, he pushed his employees pretty hard. But they did get the first train in Cape that day, and he accomplished what he said he was going to do. And then over the next 30 or 40 years, uh, Lewis Howe created about another 500 miles of uh, railroads in southeast Missouri. Uh, three separate lines that eventually he hoped would emanate out of Cape Girardeau in all directions. Although, Howe railroads looked like he took a bunch of rails, some of them used, some of the broken, <laughs> some, some were five foot long, some were ten foot long. Uh, he was known for getting uh, scrap rail from other uh, railroads that really didn't want to help him at all. But uh, uh, he was also known for cutting some corners. Uh, I know the state of Missouri said that the uh, railroad ties were supposed to be spaced no more than six inches apart. And sometimes he'd fudge a little bit, so there might have been five or six feet in between each one. <laughs> but uh, even though they were poorly constructed, uh, they, they were still main arteries that brought civilization and modernization to southeast Missouri. Uh, and, and there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of towns that people didn't realize there's a lot of towns that have come and gone. Uh, I grew up uh, in Perkins. Uh, a lot 
of the history, even with the Little River drainage, I was talking <coughs> to them up there today. A lot, a, there's been enough generations that people don't realize how big of a project that was. And it's good to keep this kind of history fresh so everybody doesn't forget. But uh, the town of Advance, uh, I didn't realize this until I started really doing the research. Advance was not there. It was originally called Lakeville which was actually east of Advance. That was where the original settlement was at. Uh, this was back in the swamp, during the swamp era. And when the Halk Railroad was built through, they decided that they would build, they would move the town to where the railroad was and they would advance, which that's where they got the name. It was ad Advance, not Advance. <laughs> but uh, towns like that, uh, there's, uh, there's been several of them that have vanished over the years. But uh, despite the questionable fa financial practices and shady business practices, railroad mania swept through Missouri in the years following the Civil War. Uh, an extensive rail system was allowed Missouri to grow and flourish in the 19th century. It shifted traffic away from the river system to the east-west valley system. The railroad became essential to Missouri's future, and the nation's uh, commerce could reach coast to coast. Um, it also provided employment for many that were displaced after the Civil War. Um, another outcome of the railroad expansion was the dramatic increase in the population and wealth of Missouri. Uh, railroads replaced rivers, and trains replaced steamboats. In 1860, just to give you an idea of how much growth there was, there was only 18, 817 miles of track in Missouri. Uh, in 1870, there were 2,000 miles. In 1909, Missouri had a total of 8,000 miles of railroads in it. Um, railroads built new towns. Uh, they had to have service facilities back then. They had uh, steam trains which required a lot of maintenance. Uh, they had to have uh, coal and water. Uh, so a lot of these towns, they were service facilities for the railroads as the trains went through. Um, and of course, like I said, the, the, the railroads proved that they were important after the Civil War. Uh, I just discovered this story last week that uh, during the blizzard of 1918, the city of Charleston was isolated. There was no way for anything or anyone to travel out for many days, but the railroad was the only way the town could get supplied with enough coal and food until the roads were clear. So that was a pretty interesting fact that I found out. Um, and I have some other, uh, other facts here. A lot of the towns that were built by the railroads uh, since the railroads came through, it was kind of like, uh, well, I'm going to build this. How about uh, I'm going to name it after my buddy here? <laughs> so the big town of Sturdivant, Missouri, if you know where that's at, located in southern Bollinger County, was named after Robert Sturdivant, a Cape Girardeau banker, when Lewis Houck built the railroad through the area. Uh, another example was uh, Allenville, Missouri, was named after Thomas Allen, the builder of the Belmont Branch Railroad. Uh, it was actually uh, built by the Iron Mountain, and uh, it was named after Thomas Allen. Oh, here we go. Skipped a line here. Uh, the city of Marquand, which that's kind of a dot on the map in Madison County now, that was named after W.G. Marquand, a director of the St. Louis Iron Mount Railroad, who donated $1,000 for the building of a Methodist church in the village, which was a lot of money back then. Uh, Morley, Missouri, was named for J.H. Morley, a surveying engineer of the St. Louis Iron Mountain, uh, to which the town owes its existence to. Even though rail, rail traffic's changed, uh, a lot of the main routes of the 1800s dwindled in use. Rail traffic has changed. Once the Thieves Road <coughs> River Bridge was completed in 1905, a lot of the traffic had changed. Uh, 
and of course over the decades so has <coughs> some of the towns and some of the use. <coughs> a lot of the original old railroads were abandoned and scrapped, but many are still in use. Uh, the usage of railroads have, have dr dr drastically changed since the 1800s, but uh, the railroad's purpose of moving bulk is still kept the same, although passenger service is still not used as much. So, uh, so the next time you have to, you know, have to wait on a train, just uh, just think that there's a little bit more to it. There, the state of Missouri has really done well from uh, the railroads, and the visionaries from the 1800s. They saw a little farther than probably most would have thought, and Missouri is still a gateway to the West uh, as far as the railroads, and it's a railroad hub today.